Man, peace to the family. We are getting situated in here. Let me make sure we live. Uh, we we'll getting situated in here. Oh man, so peace to the family. Um, we are now live. I had to wait for them. I want to give a shout out to the people advertising with me. Um, Riverside Tai Chi. Shout out to Riverside Tai Chi for your cultural custom jewelry. Um, you can buy tailwist designs, comedic designs, and more. Go to RiversideTaiChi.com slash shop. Also, make sure you check out Shea Genre, S-H-A-Y Genre, G-E-N-R-E. -E, album, Life in a Song, available on Tidal, iTunes, Spotify, available everywhere. Shout out. Um, the website moviemusic.wixsite.com slash Shea Genre. Um, make sure you check it out or just Google Shea Genre. Dope, dope music. If you are in the mood for that R&B tip, some good R&B music. Shout out to loveliftlife.com. Um, they got the Ashe God cards where you invoke the energies within you. So they, they, that's dope right there, man. I'm glad they let it know that the energies is inside, not outside. Of course, make sure y'all come to the Brother Panic Lecture November 19th. If you're in the New York City area or if you're traveling or want to travel to New York, uh, make sure you're there. Panic's first lecture. That mosquito just got in here, man. See, man, y'all let a mosquito in here, man. That's ancestors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? yeah. Shit. When he bites your ass, you see what the, That's what, the ancestors um, doing blood rituals. But, oh, mic up, mic up, uh, mic up, man. Yeah, so brother Panda, make sure you go to www.blackmagic363. Uh, eventbrite. dot com for that, or you could go to uh, if you want to see the live stream, you go to www.usalivestream.com slash panic. That's going to be off the hook. Also, make sure you check out uh, King Simon is bringing Doctor. Aline Bay is Saturday. Aline Bay is Saturday, Saturday, yeah. Nicholas Brooklyn. So this Sunday at Nicholas Sunday, Brooklyn, November 12th, Dr. Laila Africa and Dr. M uh, Milani Stevenson, emotional eating, which a lot of us suffer from, and they will be in Brooklyn uh, present doing that. Also, um, he has uh, re uh, wellness, uh, well, uh, Ready Up Georgia. Are you ready? You know he does the disaster awareness and preparedness workshops. Right. November 20th, he will be in Stone Mountain, Georgia. For information on that, if you're in the Georgia area, call him at 347-496-1022. All right. Also, we have uh, Lisa Brown with the comedic yoga mats and more. Awesome yeah, yoga Georgia mats. Is wavy. Yeah, wavy, yeah, dope. Right? You can uh, contact her, 877-360-3330. Or you can go to her website, lisabrowntreasures.com. Um, got the new tropics. So if you want to think smarter, that. <laughs> if you want a sharper mind, make sure you go to the brother's website. I will put the link in the description. CS. So make sure you all check that out. And Facebook also, like last but not least, the brother Adika <laughs> Butler has the new book out, The Treasures of Darkness. Shout out to Adika. Yeah, Legend. Living Jews for Spiritual Legend. Resurrection. Anybody knows him, he's an awesome writer. Legend alert. And you can purchase the book at mindglowbooks.com. So, got a shout out to all the black businesses that support Brother Rich. Oh, hold on. Sp hey, to the arts degree, he got a, a live yeah, stream tomorrow. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On eleven eleven. Yeah. What's the name of that live stream you use? USA live stream. Yeah, USA, USA live stream. You could go and look for KT the Arts degree doing the Thor decoded. And it's gonna be in rare form. On November eighteenth for the Black Power Awards, 
We have the live stream link available for anybody that wants to purchase it. We're going to be dropping it in the uh, description and also in the chat room before the night is over. But uh, we have a live stream link so you could go ahead and tap into the Black Power Wars. That's something that you should see live. You, you, if you can't make, if you can't make it back to the A, for the yeah. If you can't make it back to the A, you know what I mean, and let the and, and, and witness the awards the same way that we sit back and watch the BT. We're gonna have this available for the family. Shout out to DJ, everybody involved with the awards. They're gonna be honoring Rakim. Look, this is the Black Power Award right here. This is the Oscars, the Assaults that everybody been asking for. This is it. Let me see that. 12 Talk. Shout out to Samaj, Baba Samaj for that. Studio of Pata. You feel me? Hold on. You gotta get real fleek where they get the match and ring. But, uh, that's going to be the awards that's going to be passed out. They're honoring Rakim. I wouldn't have it any other yeah, way. You're not nominated and you know you should be, but you still got the ring. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we got two nominations. Uh, one for Kings County Clothier for being um, on top of the fashion wave. And the other is for Made For This with me and Ken Bada. Salute to the God. Shout that video Bada. that he did. Bada. Bada. That, I mean, that, yo... That video should be required watching for anybody coming into the industry. Just the simple one-on-one -on -one that he gave, the science that you, you may never learn from the brothers in the studio. You may never get it like that without paying $10,000 to have somebody give it to you like that to well, get. Ending up on the couch. Facts. So salute to the God. You know what I mean? His, uh, the project that he got coming is going to. Yeah. yeah, somebody just mentioned a theme song. Yeah, shout out to Cambada. We got yeah, the theme song rocking right now. Yeah. Um, the sisters, you know what some of the sisters they said? Cop. The they sister said, the you, sister bro. said, oh, man, finally something we could twerk to. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but the uh, 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 yeah. uh, uh, conscious song yeah, exactly. we could twerk to. <laughs> her, twat, her twat is rotten. Yeah, man, I'm, 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 I'm glad. You know, that's that's more of a melodic track, so you don't really hear conscious dudes rhyming over tracks like that. So the fact that Cambada could uh, flip something like that and drop knowledge in it at the same time—that's exactly what I was looking for. So shout out to Cambada um, for making that happen. We got uh, for those that want it, it will be available within uh, by December. So y'all just wait on that. But speaking of music, yo, we got to talk about this. We've been we talked about Meek Mill several times on this program throughout the course of the last two years, man. Several times, man. This situation with his parole violation, mm -hmm. the situation with all the things I'm hearing about, like either the judge or his his PO wanting him to leave Rock Nation and sign to um, his friend's, his friend's management. management. Like it's a yeah. lot of crazy things i'm hearing and just how the whole parole thing is a setup like yo you beanie said yo if he jaywalked they setting him back in there you get hit with six years probation they just waiting for any little thing you know it's what i'm a saying leash. yeah it's like basically like a leash man so just t t tell me uh oh before we start that that youtube award y'all that's youtube so that that's nice too out of what 200 racks <laughs> this is what this is a hundred thousand so Previously or ready to die. This is the, you know what I mean? He's at 200,000. So, you know, salute to everybody who multiplied themselves. You dig what I'm saying? And it jumped to 200. Next stop, 500. But the, so, um, yeah, the situation with so the young dude, bull. So they could be on IG like Ralph Smart. <laughs> reminding people every morning. <laughs> I'm a million deep. I'm a million deep. I'm a million deep. But that's what's up. You know what I mean? So, to answer the question in a, in a, you know, in a chronological order, the first time that we talked about me, coincidentally, was the second show that we did in this series. I think we're up to 200 videos with us together. 200? But the sec we yeah. might be at 200. The second, oh, yeah, it's still no playlist. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> um, the second oh, video man, that we did, the second video that we did, uh -huh. We, 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 we talked about Meek Mill 
being one of the most, not to say, let's be clear, because I or the Puritanicals are, are forging the cross already, about to nail us. We said that when it comes to street knowledge and when it comes to having the ears of a certain okay. demographic of youth, right. Meek Mill, not because of his rhyming prowess, not because of him having the best bars, bars. not for being the most conscious mm -hmm. rapper, not for being people's savior, just for the fact that he related to so many archetypes of brothers who we can see from the street because he made himself relatable to the underdog. Right. Okay? Ever since we've heard about him, he's been living out the story that many people in America who identify themselves as black youth can automatically always say, yo, I don't care what you say, I identify with Meek's uh, struggles. The hero's journey. The hero's journey. Always persecuted, always prosecuted. You feel me? I remember in my era when I was of a younger age, there was a rapper who reminded me who, who fit the same pattern and his name was Tupac Amaru Shakur based off of the way, based off of the way that he used to get into trouble with the law, based off of the way that so many people threw, threw him away so many times. He was finished so many times. He went to jail on multiple times. Remember, people would turn their backs on him. Do you remember that? I'm talking about before they immortalized Pac. I'm talking about when we were coming up with Pac, how people honestly used to voice their opinions. Yeah, they was through with him. Like, they this would, dude had another chance. Do you know how they stoned Tupac when he was alive, family? This dude like, would have squandered another opportunity. Another opportunity. Another chance, and then he would the ride. judge tried to make him walk, put, walk along the narrow road of being a model citizen, right? He went out of line, so he gets what he deserves. Is that not the same thing, that the same narrative that you hear repeated, not just on Meek Mill, because Meek Mill is an archetype, but he represents a, a, a archetype of a larger group of people who we can identify have walked similar paths. Thanks. So all I said was Meek, is influ he's influential with the youth. Fast forward to today, you see how influential, not only with the youth, but with a contingency of hip hop. And that would I be identified as the street, real nigga element. Or, you know, people who have morals or people who hold themselves. Because remember, he, he not morals in a sense where it, it's the morals that other people are attributing to. Remember, this is Meek Mills. The story that he sold you, I guess that's the story that he is. They have a street code that they live by, though. These are the morals that they may stick to. He He's showing you a personification on how to be an artist and still be of a street element because that's just something that you can't escape. And when people hear it in his music, they applaud him. But then when they see it in real life, they're like, ah, you know. Why don't you grow up? You know, how don't you get away from that element when that <laughs> element is actually where he utilizes to solidify his base and for him to sell his character that he's packaged and presented to the world. And and not only that, if you see what he has previously done for everybody who's willing to judge him when he's in trouble, not when his album drops, though, not when his new video drops, though, not when he's showing up at All Star Weekend, not when he's being, you know, if they gave him the keys to Philly, everybody would be clapping and whatnot. Only when he's in trouble do everybody pull out the knives. But in his in his last album, I was just playing four different songs. Save me. Young Black America. Did you see the video? Um, and there's some other songs. He's, he's what we can identify as a street scholar. Like he has street. But he's speaking to the youth the, the, about the rights and the wrongs and the ramifications of living that. He should be living that life is destined to take. Things are talked about yeah, if you listen Meek, to the music. Yeah, Meek Mill has had a very, you know, roller coaster ride in regards to his career. You know what I'm saying? He's came back from the dead 
many a times that then he has these external factors that are weighing against him as well. Mm -hmm. But we're in the month of Scorpio, right? Facts. So we have to deal with inner reflection. We have to deal with culpability. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Indeed. So we deal with these stories, again, as archetypes, so we can speak to ourselves, look in ourselves at the mirror and say, what are we willing to cop to? You know what I'm saying? What are we willing to say, I had some, uh, you know, this was some of my own working, you feel me? To because we're not going to play, yeah, yeah. Gonna play the, the game of the days. Not we're at not all. We're not externalize every single thing that happens not at all. in our situations. We have to self-reflect and say, well, what did I do to find myself in a situation? Because Super that facts. gives you the opportunity to say, what can I do to get to myself out, out of the situation? And mm -hmm. that's where transformation and growth comes from. Exactly. You feel me? Definitely. And then how many times you've been in a situation since we're talking about it? And mm -hmm. I've been in these situations like me. And I've made that that contract, that compact. Yes. Okay? With that spirit force, that unseen force where you like, look. <laughs> you get me out of this, homie. And I'm willing to do X, Y, and Z. Or I'm not going to do this no more. You mm -hmm. feel me? I just need this one last time, big homie. Please look out. Yeah. Okay? And it, it's, it literally happened to me when he cracked the cell at 1.30 in the morning mm -hmm. and called my name. This was right after I was reading my Bible and made my prayers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Facts. And he called my name out of nowhere. I'm thinking I'm getting transferred to something. I'm like, this is the last thing I would expect. Mm -hmm. He's like, pack up. I'm like, what? I have had numerous occasions where this has happened in my own personal life. Indeed. Okay? Indeed. I mean, and you saw me show, you saw me show and prove my miracle. I've seen you show and prove your miracle. Indeed. You know what I'm so, saying? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Then you make that compact. Mm -hmm. Falling, falling down, down. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pause. pause. Hold up, super pause. Again, we are from the outside looking in. Just like you said, he represents this archetype. Okay, are going through these particular trials and tribulations in their own beings. Only thing, of course, people are saying. Well, it's harder for other people to squiggle out of because they don't have the opportunities that a meat has. Yeah. You feel me? They don't probably have that access to that lifeline where they can make that compact that a meek might have. You understand? But mm -hmm. meek is going to have to figure out for meek what level of culpability the meek have to do with this particular situation. Okay? So we can talk about the justice system. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. Again, that's externalizing the situation. We could talk about the justice system. We could talk about the, you know, the judge. You understand? We could talk about all of the unfair things that's done to young black American boys in this country. You mm -hmm. understand? We could talk about the fact that we're supposed to rally around our brother and send him love and support in his darkest of hours. We could talk about all that. You understand? But the internal situation right now that we have to fall back from, okay? And again, it only reminds us to reflect on our own condition and situation and say, man, you know, are we upholding our compacts, the contracts that we've made with our higher self? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us is here still on borrowed time. Yeah. Based on that compact. Niggas is on paper. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is on spiritual paper. On spiritual, spiritual paper. probation. Spiritual parole. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> and you about to get motherfucking violated. Uh, okay? You about to go see that judge. You about to see that judge. That's you know facts. what I'm saying? And some people get the book thrown at them. I so, seen it. I mean, I, I, niggas get sent up every day around my parts. Niggas die every day, B. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Indeed. So, Indeed. Take you this out I mean? again. These, these incidents and these situations, reflections. Yeah. Reflections, these only situations. For you to see yourself in the in the mirror, the mirror of life, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We can't walk in that man's shoes. I can't speak for him. I can't cape for him. I can't do nothing of the sort. I can only identify that situation and say, "Oh, I've been there." Indeed, you know I as saying? well. I've been there, and I know. I cannot. The only thing, yeah, the only thing I could do is identify and say, "Oh yeah, I had to." You know what I mean? Like I violated. I went. They, I went up north. I took a six month trip though. Came right back down. Boot camp. 
And um, one of the things that we always talk about is purgatory, or rather losing your freedom. You know, when you want to speak about the uh, some of the things to avoid in life, or some of the things to mentally prepare yourself to deal with, or, you know, just putting it on the charts, because I put it next to death. I call it a dress rehearsal for death. When your freedom is taken from you, when you're removed from your environment, when the freedom to uh, get something to eat and it's whatever to choose a time to eat or to get up and just eat, to get up and just go somewhere, to actually go to the bathroom. You, you understand what I'm saying? Whenever that's controlled, whenever that's domesticated, whenever there's a situation where somebody is telling you when you can do these natural things, you're in a place of near death. You're in purgatory. You're in a shallow grave. You dig what I'm saying? In that box, in the cage. So when your freedom is taken from you, that can do things to people. And what they do is they put our brothers and sisters in places like solitary confinement, the shoe, you know, but and utilize things like behavior modification, sleep deprivation, you know, all of these things to break people. So, you know, that's something that has to be um, the belly of the beast. The no, beast I'm just saying. The beast. the beast is the beast. And the belly's where the gastric acid is at to break you down. Yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. Come on, we keep you know. talking about the conditions. I'm like. So, what I'm saying is, yeah. we, have to, we have to identify the fact that we and meek and the meek who shall inherit the earth all belong to a culture that is perpetuating the situation that we're fake outraged about with Meek Mill to millions and thousands of people on a daily basis if they choose to follow the words, the directions, the lifestyles, the images that are portrayed by these artists in their ilk, main, uh, basically the majority of the record industry that we know about these commercial artists that are being promoted, that are being um, bankrolled, that are being marketed, that are being invested in, you feel me? That are being broadcasted, that are being put to the front, that are getting, you know, they're putting lipstick on them to make them seem as if they're shinier than other people. These are the ones to pay attention to. Their word means something. These are the, you know what I mean? And I'm not just saying, I'm saying Meek, I'm not saying him alone because what he's doing that I wanted to identify earlier is that at least he's trying to present some sort of balance. He's not out here as a hero. He might be an anti-hero, but at the end of the day, at least he's trying to show the youth, uh, 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 you know, to think on some kind of level more militant. The way that they move and certain of the things that he talks about and, uh, you know, certain codes that they try to implement. I would say that street militant, that's a Philly mind state that they always run with. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Beanie. You know how Beanie is street miller. Beanie, the jot, the, the long beards, they getting it in. They, they, you know what I mean. They, they'll bring the pain to you, but they're also very religious. They're also about family. They're also about t keeping a code. They're also about help holding up a vestige of manhood that they claim they don't. You know what I'm saying? They don't respect when they run into people who are not upholding that, and they've been known to pop off on people. You know who they feel like. These are not honorable people. All right, Rich. <clears throat> yeah. So. They got a lot of memes going around with Meek on one side. And what's the dude, Brock Turner, on the other side? Brock. What, what Brock got? He got, Brock what, a couple got of months? six months, I think, and did three. And did three. Yeah, we did a video on Brock Turner, on Brock. Do you think, can something legally, I mean, with your experience in the law system, uh, can something happen where they re reverse the decision that they made? Like, can anything happen at this point? Of course. There's actually a petition that I heard yeah, the, is government, a petition. Yeah. the governor actually uh, is behind. Right. This this asking them to review the sentence. And in, re in reviewing the sentence, the sentence could be reduced. So I definitely can um, say that this case could also show the power of the collective through social media and other things, but it's really just the power of the collective. If they want something to, you know, get a person that decision to change, it's possible. Yeah, if, if, if you're selected, if you're lucky enough to be selected by social media, you know, for them to um, to rally behind, to rally you. behind you, 
you know what I mean? Put that energy behind you. Then they they can move things. You know what I'm saying? Somebody made the call to them higher ups. Facts. You know what I mean? And and they put the situation in review. You know what I mean? To the point where they was even putting out statements that were very politicized, saying, "Well, this man has contributed to X." Or you may not care about this, or it might not. You know, this is what the situation was. There was a. Uh, there was two arrests, right? Or there was one police contact and another arrest. There was a picture taken of the brother doing a wheelie. If any at a video shoot. So if anybody lives in New York and understands that they have people doing wheelies past City Hall all day, past the precinct a hundred deep, there's a policy with NYPD that you don't arrest the bikers. And they're going, they're wheeling through green lights. I'm talking about there's 20 people wheeling at once down multiple blocks. And they and they'll all be sitting there deep and won't make it, they won't budge. So for them to single out the, and they said the hip hop police were the ones who singled them out. Then there was another case and they got thrown out. So what we're saying is the example of what, what we're seeing in that brother speaks to the multitudes, the millions of brothers like y'all was talking about weeks ago dealing with Tyrese, not Tyrese, the character, the situation at hand. The fact that there's something very unlawful taking place inside of the court system and it is affecting men of a melanated hue, black men, African-Americans, whatever you want to call them, at a dis a, pro, a, a disproportionate number and the stagnation and other things that it's causing should be definitely challenged. We live in a day and times where everything is being challenged. We live in a day and times where everyone is being encouraged to be a disruptor, to change the rules, to change the mold, to, um, to, to bend the rules and recreate a new reality. So why not start, you know, having these conversations why be comfortable not just with Meek Mill knowing that millions of our brothers and sisters are being, uh, 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 you know, un, 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 into purgatory. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? We we seen the the documentary earlier with uh, Khalif Browder, the Time, one Jay Z yes. put together. Um, both of you have experience within the system. Yes. Like, what would you say? Did did it take something away from you that you can never get back? Now this brother Khalif Browder, he committed suicide. So obviously things are going on that people can't even imagine. So it's one thing to look at it on TV and hear about it. It's another thing to be in there. Being in there, what did it take away from you? What part, like, did it take away part of your manhood and something emotional, something psychological? All right. When people come home from war, people who are returning for war are known to, to be the ones who are committing suicide at a highest rate right. in America right now. It was also at a higher rate after Vietnam and the Korean War and World War II. So there's a, there's a, there's a level of trauma that war in, 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 in views upon you. It, it takes away a level of your humanity. Not only do you become desensitized in war, you can actually become dehumanized because you're exposed to the savagery of war, which is the humanity, savage of the yeah. savagery of humanity oh, man, yeah. when it's mask off, not this mask on shit. When the mask comes off, when the, you know what I mean? You get to see the it, you know what I mean? So you, you get to see they live. And people are exposed to that in war. Jail will be a stripped down version of a war, but there's war nonetheless. I doubt that there's any facility they put together with there's bars and there's people who have been convicted for uh, violent and nonviolent offenses where they don't feel like they're in a warlike environment. You feel me? A control one. A like control that. one at that. You know, you become sort of desensitized. You become sort of, you know, um, you lose a lot of your, you, you see that humanity is not necessarily what they say it is. Yeah. You see the shit for what it is. You see, see it for the, what it is, see the yo. the nature of man. You feel me? You like, know what I'm saying? You see some things that you pretty well wish that you could forget. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You see situations that are forced and you see situations that are unforced. You be like, damn, that's really who man is? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when, when, and I mean, the brother Khalif Browder, he was under extreme circumstances. He's a graduate yeah, he was, of, of C-74. Yeah, you know when I was saying? 18. You feel me? Which is adolescence, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, that was the adolescent building, and that was the wildest building with all of the cuttings. You remember, Khalif Browder came into Rikers Island system after the war. After the war. We're talking about... After, you know what I mean? Like, after the yeah, winter was coming. This hell's aftermath that he got caught up in. He got caught up in that. And that folded So, out. yeah, so, we was there during that war. And, you know, it wasn't crazy. Like, don't, I, wanna, I don't want to paint no, no picture like it was a, a, a war zone. Because it's not like that. It's just that you're in an environment. It's controlled. It's jail. Y'all doing chilling, doing your time, getting by. But shit pops off. And there's power struggles. And there's other, and it's like how anything else plays out in the streets, in war, in the ballroom. There's somebody trying to take somebody out to get more power from that. There's all like the mafia, like all of the, the movies that you see, the homosexual thing. I wasn't exposed to any of that during all of the times that I've been locked up. They may have been homos around, but I had the, the, the opportunity. I had the pleasure of never having to see that shit. But I know that it exists. You can look everywhere around and know that it exists. I think the introduction of it through movies, through shows like The Oz and other shows even help perpetuate that. Omar from The Wire. You dig what I'm saying? Like, we're talking about, you know, a, a mental health issue at, in some situations. Yeah, so individuals are coming home with PTSD. Not, it's not, there's it's not, it's not diagnosed. There's nobody that's going on behind the wall that speaks to it. And it your wife don't know how to deal with it. Your community. And the water might be a little choppy and with them. You know what I'm saying? So you see people snap in society. With that PTSD, yeah, and he folded. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> he wasn't built for that, and that's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? We came up at a time where you didn't have a choice. Like you, you had better. You know what I'm saying? It was like you know how they got American Ninja. Like that was you had to go through it. You know what I mean? Like there was a if you dodged it, you was you know what I mean? You had to have draft uh draft papers or something. Like you was you was you was co signed for something else, but the majority of our generation, I'm talking ninety one family, ninety two, ninety three. I'm I'm just a few years older than my son is now. You feel me? Yo, 13-year-olds were knocking out grown men, taking what they wanted. People were wilding 20 deep, like just taking everything from everywhere in our wild and those were in the in the early days. No gangster hip hop was doing that to us. We didn't even have NWA. You know, that was just the, you know, that was just the era that we lived in. That was a way of life. So in the gladiator school, in a way of life, you get through it, you get through your tests, you know what I mean? You survive, you become more cognizant of what it is to walk in a world where anything can happen at any time. You get PTSD because you... Just the, the, the chess plan that you had to make it with one house, have beef with another house, going to court, all of these... Up. Yeah, all that. I remember the the when shit pops off, just how things metamorph. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That whole energy when you are in a closed unit, whether you in the big pen, whether you in your unit, when shit pop off and you can just you know what I'm saying, you have to be so instantaneously aware of your surroundings. Yeah. Because but anything can happen. It prepares so, you for war. It prepares you for the the world. It prepares you to move in all environments because you've now, you have an astute survival instinct. Right. 
You, you feel me? And, yeah. You were in a controlled environment, but you were in a zoo. And to not get eaten in that zoo or not to get become the wildebeest because there's lions, tigers, and bears all around, you got to be able to, you know what I'm saying, maneuver. So, you know, even in the last situation where I got kidnapped in the airport in Detroit, um, the whole situation was I saw how I dictate the energy all around me. I realized that this is about going, you know, knowing, you know, that our brothers and sisters are suffering, but I was able to see the humanity in people that people are necessarily throw away. Facts. You feel me? And that's that. that, that that's, yeah, that's how I made it through all of my bids. You feel me? Yeah. I saw the humanity in people. You know, I was always the light in the darkness. You feel me? So there's people that still was incarcerated with me in 94, 95. They saw my Facebook and my Instagram to reach out. Yeah. You know what I mean? I found a lot of my creative talent behind the wall. I have a different story. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I learned how to, you know, master my skill in, in writing, master my skill in drawing. Mm -hmm. I started rhyming in there. You know what I'm saying? I started my, my workout regimen. I found some semblance of spirituality by way of religion. I got to read them books. I read the Medu Necha. Remember yeah. you brought me? Yeah, yeah. He used to bring me bags. Of, he used to bring me all of the fresh books. Yeah. This was 90 what? 97 or something? I was locked up in 97. Damn. 98? I don't know. And yeah, like I, I, I woke up. You know, I I'm a, I, I opened up yeah. to to it consciousness. Took, yeah. It gave me an opportunity to find myself. Slow know? me down. Yeah. Where the streets did not. Like, yeah, I was moving. So I even with the meek situation, out. like sometimes you get them biz to sit you down because the reaper coming. He says, "Somebody save me." You know what I mean? Like yeah. those bids have been known to take people out of the path that they were moving in the foreign doing two twenty. With no breaks, and that shit hit pump. Ah! Yeah. And no, it sits nobody, you. Nobody, nobody wants to hear this. this nobody want to hear this. Nobody want to have about you know. Maybe it was for your best. What facts? How dare you? That brothers in the cost. Look, shut facts. the fuck up. Okay. You're my twin brother. Yeah. When the first the first felony that I caught, the same way that he got on pro on probation, ninety three. Right, Queens. Mm -hmm. Or Mama, was I guilty of that? I think so. No, that was the Rat Pack. Remember, they locked up the whole store, oh, yeah. and was I wasn't even there before. So, did I even have anything to do with that? No. But wait, <laughs> <laughs> nah. You I'm, said because we had came back. You said you was there two weeks prior. I don't know whether you was in the store or not. Wasn't in the store. They booked all of us. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And through charges, imagine if somebody, if the police shuts down the gates of a store and locks all of the black men in the store up. Mm -hmm. If you're of a young age. They were people who was in that store. Yeah, because I remember it was around Christmas. Thank you. Yeah. They sent me and another brother up north because I was on probation. You dig what I'm saying? But I didn't have nothing to do with that. So I'm just saying, but I knew with all of the stuff that I got away with in life, that shit was one of those things where I couldn't even, you know what? I would rather be in jail for something that I didn't do because I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't complain. It sat me down. It gave me a time to think. It gave me a time to be in solitary confinement. It made me flirt with death. So it evolved me in a faster way than going to school did. Because even in school, were we not, you know, juggling and flirting with death as well? With all of the beef that was coming with, you know, the, the projects against other flat, but the jealousy, the envy and all that. Hey, the hate. All my beef dead. And all, said, all my beef dead from she said. And the ironic part about the whole thing is all of them are gone now. Right. Rest in peace. Rest in peace to you. I mean, uh, when you see things like 
the way Meek moves, you know, Saf Safari got jumped. They said it was Meek's crew. Is is it hard to feel French sorry? Got yeah, yeah it, it, Montana got. It, is it hard to them, feel sorry for? Is it hard? Is it hard to feel sorry for these young these young brothers out here that get caught up in the system when you see their lifestyles ain't the best type of lifestyles to live? Look, real nigga alert. What is it gonna be? Some people are moving in ways where they're going to demand a level of respect and they're going to hand out justice the way that they see fit because we do live in a, in a place where justice doesn't work. That's what everybody's marching about. That's why everyone's calf muscles are up, right? So I don't want to hear that. Now, if, if we don't know, listen, we belong to an industry or a community where there's so much behind the scenes stuff. Right. There may some there may be some things happening where people got to get straightened out and you who are out here judging you will not understand why because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what happened with French Montana. I don't know what went down really with Safari the things that he may have said to him on a drunk text. You feel me? On FaceTime. I don't know. I'm not getting involved in that. That's that's their way of handling their situations. Are they not grown men? I will say this though. Yeah. Um, because, you know, social media is relatively a, a, a quote unquote new thing. And prior to that, everything would be rumors and conjectures if you didn't have footage or, you know, eyewitness testimonial or somebody witten, wit, willing to, you know what I'm saying, come to the hearing and be like, Your Honor, this is what I've seen. Yeah. But we live in a social media era where. When this man is doing this, or his entourage is doing this, his goon goons is doing this for him, that should make front page news. It does. So you're looking at the modern era, right, where what you do, <clears throat> everything is attributed. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you've you done PSI, pre-sentence investigation before, and they tally up, you know what I'm saying, what your sentence is going to be based on your hits and your numbers. Like, okay. <laughs> You've had convictions before. You didn't finish school. You've done mm -hmm. this. Now they're factoring things that should be non-factors. Your social media activity. Your social media activity. Of course, they're watching I can't your videos. To tell you, and, your, and, your and we're going to do an episode on this at some point. I have family that works in the court systems. Yes. I have friends that work in the court system. You know what I'm saying? They are telling me, please inform the people and let them know about all of the cases that we are seeing where people are coming in here and they're utilizing social media, media to hunt, yeah to get them. to sentence them facts they use utilizing social media to book them and they utilize the social media to finish them once they get in there mm -hmm. to convict them yeah okay people are getting conspiracy based on them being on threads where crimes are mentioned Mm -hmm. All right, and then crimes are carried through. Everybody on the thread is going down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have to understand in the social media era, when you putting hands on somebody and it's making TMZ, you feel me? All of that is filtering into the decision making process that the judges and the judicial system are making. All right. Mm -hmm. When the onus is already. For us to say, well, they're already out to get you to begin with. You don't give them things to work with to justify what they're going to do by way of a lynching. That's true. Because what I can say is this. Two to four may very well be an unjustifiable number to smash somebody with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Based on the criteria of she's saying, yo, I had to throw the book at you because of X, Y, and Z. No, you was trying to make an example out of somebody. You politicize that man's life, right? That's one way to look at it. Like I said, then we have to jump outside of us looking at something external that we really don't understand and say, well, maybe this is his own internal plight and something that he has to find his way out for him to garner the necessary strength for him to have a resurgence and a transformation. Because like I said, we in the month of Scorpio. Right. So when does the culpability, the self-culpability kick in? No, it always kicks in. I just never would want to say that he got locked up or it's his it's right for him to be incarcerated because of the fact that he had fights before, you know, dealing with people who obviously he had some issues with and we're not talking to you know what I'm saying? Like shit happens. You know. Absolutely does. And 
the fact that I'm not saying that it wasn't a factor in the situation, although the judge did not mention either situation. She made it, you know, she could have put that in her dissertation, but she would she was giving him all of these other reasons. And those reasons are what we're utilizing. That's what we're base basing. You know, that's what the public is basing their, uh, you know, their their outcry about or right. their out, their outrage. Not to say that if you get locked up for stomping out safari or if you get locked up for whatever you did by, you know, whatever fight that they had with uh um, French Montana, mm -hmm. there was a scuffle, no no law enforcement, none of that. So therefore, no laws were broken, and right. they went about their business. We are connoisseurs and purveyors of all things online during all times of the day. And a whole bunch of people get passes. You feel me? All I'm saying is let's not pull out the moral compass on a situation such as that when we know what it is. You feel me? And, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I said. Watched, <clears throat> I watched a very interesting YouTube stream yesterday. And it was from my brother, Dr. Umar Johnson. Yeah. And he utilized this opportunity to juxtapose both situations of Meek and Tyrese. Yeah, I saw that. You know, and, um, you know, our, our brother, was speaking very adamantly against people making memes of this situation or finding any level of folly in both of these brothers, you know what I'm saying, uh, most vulnerable moment. Unfortunate they, moment. Unfortunate, yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunate vulnerable moments. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Okay. Um, in a sense, I agree with that in one way, but then in the Tyrese way, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Goofy behavior. Let's utilize this opportunity. Yeah, like come to on. To say, um, you know, we we do a lot of spontaneous videos here <laughs> on Black Magic Three Six Three. We tackle uh, topics as they pop up. I didn't have a lot of the backstory <laughs> to the Tyree situation. I'm not recanting my um, my support. Yeah. You know, because I simply said. Let's not bash the brother, you know what I'm saying? Because what he's going through is symbolic or endemic of what the majority of melanated men in this country are going through. Now, as per his social media activities, yeah. I didn't know about him trolling the, the, the rock. Oh, you didn't know about that? I didn't know about him twerking on camera, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know about, you know, I didn't know he had this narcissistic... Um, Profile, personality, personality disorder. disorder when it yeah. comes to social media and his, his need for acceptance. You know, I didn't know that he was going through this this downfall. I didn't even know about the child abuse charges. Well, I didn't know, know about these yeah, things. You ain't know enough then. I didn't, yeah. yeah. So, you know, some could say I didn't know enough, but, you know, based on me just seeing what I saw in, 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 in regards to somebody feeling pain. Yeah. And, wanting to voice that particular pain but coming to the internet the internet don't love you okay the internet don't love you yeah. now we you know the same support we're seeing meat go through remember when it's time to roast meat the oh, internet they, has been unforgiven oh they dragged him you understand yeah. the internet has been unforgiven so the internet is an interesting creature you dig what I'm saying because then they'll you across one day and, and then they lick your into, wounds yeah. and breathe life into you the next. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Tyrese, the internet don't love you. You know what I'm saying? So he came as if he was coming to the internet looking for support and sympathy. You understand? Know Facts. But I ain't know his level of goofy though. Well, now you know. Nah, no. Knowing this half the battle. Baby boy. Jody, that's Jody. Mm. I, I want to... Um, Get to some calls real quick. See what the people got to say about out here, out there the about this um, Meek Mill situation. Yeah, let's say you know everybody's entitled to their opinion. Right, I'm sure right, it is. Right, right. I'm sure so, people are. You got some questions, and not just the Meek Mill. The Meek Mill set is it, it's a setup for us to talk about the system in general, the parole system, how the parole thing is a setup. 
brothers that's on probation got to be home by 9 30 10 30 11 30. Yeah. how can you do oh. magic to get out that <laughs> shit? like nigga. so so what, yeah it's just a conversation what, what that needs could they use to get out of those out of those bars that needs because i remember coming home and i was like yo you know i know what certain people do with paperwork and, and they make things happen to, I, I've seen people get sprung out of situations that that tends to be some of the master keys that you can use to open up the cages and break the shackles is a is um a neatly crafted let me uh, give this number red the All number right. the call the number is 718-865-8514 once again the call the number is 718865 Eight five one four. If you got some questions when for the, I fought to stay for the out brothers, of my situation, I utilized everything. Yeah, I ain't leave no stone unturned. unturned. I know. Okay? I already know. I threw everything at them, and I was successful. So I can't sit back and say one thing worked over the other. Yeah, it was a combination. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, yeah, you know. Yep. If 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 if, if they value that level of freedom. <laughs> Yeah. You don't have to bang. Gotta figure out how to turn off that ringer, y'all. <laughs> Let's crazy. do that on okay, Can't Buy the Ringtone, please. <laughs> I'll help you change it. Let me turn home. this down. <laughs> please, family, you got a question for the brothers? Tell you how to turn this back around. Hello? Let's do Yeah. Peace, family, do you have a question for the brothers? Yo, the anthem is red and the blue. What it do? It's your people calling from Dallas, Texas, man. What's going on, brother? Salute to the God. Peace. Good, Peace family. to Dallas. Shout out to Dallas. Yeah, yeah, man. What's going on, fellas? Look, man. I'm, uh, I'm actually doing some political work here in Dallas man, at the local level, trying to get some people sent to Congress. How do y'all feel about, uh, us working with local politicians to help eradicate some of this bullshit that they got us going through, man. Because as y'all know, as across the nation here in Texas and widely across the United States, we're dealing with this madness, man. Do y'all even think that we should be doing this, bro? Or is it a waste of time? Or should we find a way to merge the consciousness with the political, with the finance, so we can go ahead and just move how we need to move out here, man? Because I've been watching y'all for three or four years, man. And I'm going to keep it all the way frank with y'all, man. I was in the service and everything. And red, bro, red, keep coming with that fire, bro. You got boys out here, man. Bro, I'm speaking from the heart, bro. When you come with that fire, bro, you make sure that, uh, you know what I'm saying, you, you put us on game, bro. You woke me up while I was in the service, bro. And I owe my life to you for that, G. Like, I appreciate that, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know what I'm saying, I'm, 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 I'm aesthetic. I'm talking to y'all, homie. I'm trying to be like, no. I don't know how how woo woo shit, but nah, nah, you know nah, what I'm nah. saying? We're just saying, but we yeah. appreciate what y'all do, man. And what do you think we should do as far as unifying the political, the economic, as well as the spiritual embodiment of what we're trying to push, man? And uh, red and blue, man, God bless y'all, bro. Appreciate y'all, man. And uh, dang, if I can do it on the phone with y'all, man, this shit crazy, man. I watch y'all every day, dog. Nah, but, uh, nah. you know what I'm saying? You waking brothers up, man. And uh, especially down south because the knowledge isn't down here. You know, some anomalies is up on the East Coast. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? So we just appreciate y'all doing what y'all do and keep doing what y'all do. Blue, what it do, baby? Hold it down. <laughs> How you family? Peace, man. Indeed. We appreciate the input. Um, I honestly think that, yes, you should merge the consciousness with the politics and the politics with the finance because you have to get a political hold in your community to get the finances under order. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And in order for you to stay grounded, you have to ground yourself in some of the key active players in spirituality in order to move things okay. to get, you know, on the unseen. You know, I, I please make sure that you tune in to this live stream with the brother um panic coming up, you know what I'm saying, on the nineteenth, mm -hmm. because he can give you those tools and, and explain to you how this quantum field works so you can utilize this information to work the unseen, to work the mechanics to make things move in your favor. You know, some people feel at this point it might gonna have to take magic to pop some of these cages open and get some of our brothers out because Texas has an astronomical rate of incarceration. I think one of the highest in the country. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Number two behind Kelly, man. What's gonna move these things if 
if what we're looking at is politics in play to begin with. This is all political. Those privatized prisons right. is making a whole lot of money in Texas. They're not going to have a change yes. of heart and start opening gates and letting people out. Mm -hmm. You feel me? They throw keys away in Texas. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's, yeah, that's, I got to kind of do it for the years right now. The alarming rate. I think I that the yeah. rate is the highest in Texas. So they not only want to incarcerate our family down there, they, you know, they really want to kill them. So, so I feel yeah, it. It's, it's I feel it. Yeah, we we need to have a unified agenda, an agenda before going into the political realm. And by having this agenda, then once you get into that realm, you have a purpose. You know what you're there for. We need we need we need uh we need to uh, find out about yeah. these treaties that have hold mm -hmm. our land, land resources mm -hmm. that have been you know. Yeah. That are being held on to by uh, faulty treaties yeah. and all kind of shabby paperwork and yeah, things of that nature. Quick, before you, um, before we disconnect, I want you to look more into Claude Anderson and how he lays out the structure of how to address politics. You got to come with the bag. You buy politicians, yes, sir. and then politicians do your yes, thing. You know what I'm saying? So you have to um, bring your level of community activists and organizers together around some sort of spirituality, enact that spirituality to tap into economics and then go play into politics by getting behind the politicians that are willing to do your bidding and then you can start playing that game. You know what I'm saying? It's a fiduciary game. It has to deal with money. It takes money to move those things around. Facts. You know what I mean? Unless, again, you know what I'm saying? If, if, an economic platform out there as well. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to let this down. What's his name? His name is Pop. Jay Daddy. Yeah, no, Jay Morrison. Uh -huh. Is who you look at with the real estate and the economics. Uh -huh. And it's a brother named Pop Darby. D A R B Y. Pop underscore Darby. You can find him on Instagram. He's out of Houston. All right. Okay, this one. Hey man, appreciate that man. And we are doing ground grassroots group, man. I went and got a hundred petition signed to get this brother on the ballot for the Democratic Party today, man. We working, we out here grinding, man. We ain't taking no for answer. We ain't taking no shots, man. We about to link this thing up from I twenty to I ninety five to forty five down to ten, man. We ain't taking no shots. We gotta keep pushing, put our foot on the gas, but we're gonna do it the right way, not the wrong way, so we can make it last for not just me and you, but for the future, man. And mm -hmm. salute to y'all, man. Just, just know y'all like the only ones on the line, bro. We holding y'all down, man. That's on the side, baby. But y'all keep holding it down up there. Up in the tri state, man. All right, salute, all right, man. Salute. <clears throat> all right, thank Peace you, love and light. Thank you. Right. Yeah, shout out to that brother, real yeah. positive brother. Shout out to that brother and what he got going on. Absolutely, um, a million more like him. Before, yeah, before we get to the next question, a quick question. Uh, um, how to turn this damn ring off? I guess just unplug it. But um, quick question, in terms of, you know, politics and we want change to happen within the system and the whole voting dynamic, we've heard for years, brothers and sisters within the conscious community, I've heard y'all say, whether it's Dr. Valentine, numerous people say that, um, you know, with, just keep in mind, Trump is elect when Trump got elected, when he was running for president, that, you know, your vote don't count. That the president is selected, not elected, and that it's a theater. So everybody ran with that. Everybody's been running for that. So for let's say, let's just say the last decade, everybody's running for that. Who calls himself woke or conscious? Yeah. Once Trump gets in the office, everybody flips the script. Not everybody, but most people flip the script and say, "Oh, Trump's base got him in office." Uh, uh, the racist people in the country got him in office. That's how he got him in office. Yeah. So it seems like a contradiction. First, y'all saying the vote don't matter, but now Trump is in office. Oh, his base got him in office. If his base got him in office, then that means our, our base could have got somebody else in office. But y'all was telling us for 10 years, 20 years that the vote don't count. So it's like it's kind of a contradiction that I'm here. Did Trump base get him in office or not? Because they saying the vote don't count. Well... One of the things that they haven't clarified when they say that the vote doesn't count, they mentioned the president, the vote for president doesn't count. But what they're not 
mentioning is the vote for mayor and governor and senator that does count. Yeah, all politics is local. You understand so, all? Yeah, we, we <clears throat> emphasize local politics. Again, if that's your thing, if that's your level of organizing, if mm -hmm. you're in the system, you might as well play to win. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So did Trump's base get him in office? Bro, Robert Mercer got him in office. Got him in office. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Ooh. And we still have to understand electoral college politics. We haven't had that conversation. I don't think that we clearly understand it. Do you know any um, delegates or super delegates? Nope. Do you? All right. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to get the spirit cookers in instead of Trump. You know? Hmm. So, I mean, presidential politics, that's an entirely different conversation. That's a different bag altogether. Yeah. But the ground swelling of it is local politics because... You know, that's the engine for these political machines, whether they be Democratic or Republican. Look, exactly. And look what Trump, with his whole agenda, is based off the majority in the House. You know what I mean? The majority of them being Republicans. So that aspect is controlled by the people. You dig what I'm saying? So, yeah, you would make sure that you put, at least because we know that they're both two wings of the same vulture, but... It's just some of them are going harder than others with no Vaseline and no brakes on, on, on what it is that they're trying to do to not only, you know, make life harder for you, but to, to, to threaten your future. Yeah. And so, then, you know, <clears throat> on November 9th, 2016, mm -hmm. Negroes was blaming us for Trump. <laughs> yeah, we put Trump in office. <laughs> they said we put Trump in office. That's shit crazy. They didn't say Trump supporters. They's like, it's y'all niggas. Y'all telling yeah. us the pills. Y'all telling people not to vote. Y'all the reasons that Trump the got Trump elected. Trump got in. It was they us. Was it was the, us the, ten the that didn't vote. Difference. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't know by now that this whole, you know, that the up enchilance of this corporation is rigged, then I don't know what to tell you. you know. But local politics is something that should be uh, definitely spoken of more so. There should be politicians that are chosen and selected by not just our community communities that we're affiliated with communities that serve our purpose and communities that we can um, sit down at the table with you know what i mean they're they're politicians that are not of our nationality that are in office right now who hold positions of power that we should be investing in and in, in coming together and writing that check so he could at least answer some of our calls indeed let me um before we get back to the calls let me give a, a big thank you to Sankofa in the live chat who sent the donation, yes, $100. Yes. $100. That's right. That's right. Uh, Sankofa, Sankofa wrote, I remember the Twin Pillars when I used to live in Iraq, late 80s, early 90s. That was a different time, if you know what I mean. Yep. Now, full circle, I run into you guys on YouTube a, fi a few years back now that I live, in, I live in Atlanta. I love you guys and appreciate you. Salute, Sankofa. Salute, Sankofa. Yeah, yeah, thank you for Love the you donation. Too. It is definitely well appreciated. Shout out to the Patreon family. If you haven't signed up to Patreon, make sure you go on Patreon and sign up. There's a lot of exclusive content content on there. I'm going to be uploading my entire DVD library on there. So for everybody that you know wants some information that's hard to get or you know just want to support, make sure you go sign up. Uh, Patreon.com slash Blackmagic363 And uh, with that being said The caller hold on, number hey, hold on, my, yeah. so We got Patreon backslash Red Pillar And that's AR My birthday is November 14th <laughs> And if you want to know what I want For my birthday I want 100 patrons <laughs> And two gold teeth Not bad <laughs> hey, I, That's what I know, want for my birthday hey, my You gotta understand Outpouring Rich Anybody who Grew up with us in the 80s, in the 90s, Word. you know what I'm saying? And some people in the 2000s, to see this level of transformation, especially having a conversation here today about a situation like a brother like Meek Mill, you know, <clears throat> we come from the Meek Mill times 1000s, because you couldn't be squeaking through, you know what I'm saying? I don't really know if Meek is about that life. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really you know, don't. I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen his resume on his card. I know he keeps going around him. But, you know, you couldn't be, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you had to be that, that package that you present into the world because you're going to get tested. 
You feel me? I come from a place where there's a million Meek Mills up north. You know what Facts. I mean? Like all of the Meek Mills is <laughs> up north, all throughout the country. You know what I'm saying? Because they filtered all throughout. So people that know us from that era and that epoch, they hear this information and have seen this transformation. You know, it's doing something to them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's inspiring them and they can't help but salute it because, you know, we came far and we represent a bygone era of people who did not make it. Did not make it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they, 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 they deserve, some of them deserve statues in their hoods. We're, you know what I mean? That, that's what we always got to factor in. You know, people, there's people who have contributed so much to their surroundings. Keep in mind, the brother Meek Mill has a lot of negative spirits that or negative experiences. He got a lot of bodies following he him. He got a lot of bodies following him. Three, I believe. I know if, um, when I was in Detroit, everybody was talking about Dex Osama, right? And then your Lil Snoop. And I believe there was another artist recently, but the brother has lost damn near all of his artists to gun violence, caskets, death before first album. So imagine- You're not even talking about the street soldiers. That's what I'm saying. Imagine, I'm talking about, yeah, your artists, not all of them are dead. So it's like, you know, it's just, how do you clean that? How do you, yeah, yeah, you feel you know me? Saying? How do you clean that you know, off of your spirit? Can you keep carrying caskets on your back? You know what I'm saying? Through the wilderness, at some point, that thing become a lot heavy. You gotta, you gotta sit down for a second and reevaluate some things. You know what I'm saying? You have to get that off of you if you expect to be going another 30, 40, 50, 60 years out here. You know, this might be a blessing in disguise. <coughs> For me, and if you've never been through a situation like that, you wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is you Chinese to you. Like, this is Chinese, but trust me. Man. So the caller number, once again, family, 718-865-8514. We're going to start taking a few more calls. Uh, it's about to be midnight, so we're going to take a few oh, more man. and wrap it up soon. Okay. Uh, 718-865. Thank you for staying up with us. You yeah, 88514 is the caller number if you got any questions for uh, the brother, the brothers, the pillars. All right. Let's see what's going on in the chat here. Okay. Well, let me take this call, family. Peace, family. Welcome to the show. Do you have a question? Salute to the family. This is DJ Russ Rupert from the West Coast, Sacramento, California. Sac Tone. Sac Tone. Uh, shot, yeah, good, shout man. out. Yeah, yeah uh, last few days I've been going through the history of the the black film movement. So I just wanted to ask if y'all could kind of go in on uh, how Hollywood and the media basically created this terminology of black exploitation so they can dismiss the political aspects of the black film movement in the 1970s and how they basically dumbed down the films that were being created so that they could implement this this cultural materialism that's been reinforced through hip hop that we so evidently see today. Okay, okay. Excellent question, brother. I appreciate you even throwing that out there. Um, yeah, definitely. This is how my father explained it to me when he talked about how the genre began to change, he said that when, um, what's my dude? Mario, Mario Van Peebles Pops, Melvin Van Peebles, yeah. put out Sweet Baby Black Ass. What's the name of sweet it? Ba sweet Baby Black Ass. Sweet, sweet, sweet Bad Ass, sweet bad, sweet bad Ass song. I just watched it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he was militant, right? He was street, right? So we had a street militant element that was very dominant in those days and times with these different groups they they had they were a a, a a perfect balance of the two in a sense right wasn't all the way point dexter nah wasn't all the way dexter wasn't all the way dexter so the movies that were coming out were portraying black men who were politically astute you know they had a sense of black pride or they had a sense of you know warrior you know, warriorhood with, with them, and they were going against the symbols of, you know, uh, Europeans right. and oppressions 
that many people, not just in New York, not in Detroit, not just in o right. Oakland, whether, whether it be corrupt police, yeah, or mafia, or mafia, yeah, okay, you know, and those were the those were the intimidators, those were the peoples who were preying on our people back in the days by shaking them down, oh, by shaking them down, by um, you know, uh, extorting them. To, you know, by falsely ar arresting them and abusing them and locking them and giving them yeah. mill type sentences, you feel me? To to snuff out their light, to break them, because ultimately that's what the prison system is designed to do. But specifically, these are these laws, these colorable laws, these arcane laws, like the child support system, like uh, the 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 sentencing for drug offenses, like the three strikes and you're out, like the what did you you just said earlier about the um the prison sentencing chart? What did you call that? Oh, the PSI. The PSI. All of these things. When they 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 started taking, because the PSI is a federal mandate. This is federal law. You know, I had got incarcerated in Virginia, which was Commonwealth. So Commonwealth was utilizing federal law. Virginia was the first place that I know of to implement truth and sentencing. Zero tolerance is what they called it. This Facts. is what uh, Clinton was responsible for. So in the state system, they implemented a federal guideline system and also a federal sentencing system where now you had to do 85% of your time. You know what I'm saying? So people went from, in Virginia, take for instance, they was getting sentenced to 30 years, right? For, for you know, like crack cocaine sales and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But you only did half your time. So you would do 15 years and then off good time, you probably come home off of, 11 out of that. Mm -hmm. But truth and sentencing, you had to bring 85% to the door. To you the still door, do. Yeah. And they never justified the sentencing. So, or they never adjusted the sentencing. So there still was 19 year olds coming in there getting 35 years for selling dime crack cocaine. Two, two dime crack cocaine Two sales. dimes, man. Come on. I seen this with my eyes. You <laughs> feel me? Because the laws changed in 95. I got sentenced in 95. So I seen the 19 and the 18 year olds coming in there with 30 and 35 years, okay? So th this is what Clinton and them did. Continue. Yeah, so the movies were depicting a pedigree and a level of black militancy that was indicative of what was taking place not only in the 60s and the 70s, going stretching all the way back to the 30s and the 20s, you know what I mean? Like this is urban legend and the Europeans created a, a level of satire. You know, Gordon Parks was involved with uh, our good brother um, Melvin as well. Right. You know, what they were doing was they were utilizing film. The lens, right. They were utilizing the, the lens to tell our story and they were utilizing the power of film to enforce yeah. uh, reality or to enforce a perception of who we were as a people, what our values were, what our morals were, what, our, what the snakes amongst us, how they moved, and, and, and they showed you that in a cinematic form. They introduced different characters. Yeah, um, especially you being out west, you know, the Panther movie is an interesting one, how they showed you, you know what I'm saying, the mob and the police, corrupt police, they utilized the pimp and the pusher. Yeah. The quote unquote hustler to stifle out the revolutionary. Facts. And that was the war that was fought in the seventies for which the revolutionary lost. Facts. And the pimp and the pusher They wore, prevailed. Yeah, they prevailed. So like you said, Bravo. then then, then they put hip hop together as an institution. It might have took a few years for it to catch up. Right? Because like my father said, he said consciousness of hip hop has always been the exception and not the rule. Facts. He said party and bullshit has always been the rule of hip hop from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Right. He was there. Yeah. He said, the, 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 you know, that shit that y'all talking, the consciousness. And I read um, Melly Mel's account of how the message came about. He didn't want to do that shit. He didn't write it. Facts. Sylvia Robinson was responsible for that. Yeah. That was her idea. That's product They didn't placement. want to interject consciousness into hip hop. That's not organic. It was party and bullshit. Right. So. Remember, they went into the, the movie that changed it all was Superfly. They went into Superfly with afros and came out with perms. Yes. That movie was detrimental the same way that Scarface 
created a whole generation of drug dealers and made that shit sexy as ever and and hide in right. technicolor. You know what I mean? And once they began after Superfly came, then Hollywood, you know, hopped on, you know, the you, the same Harvey Weinstein type again, of people, remember, the exploiters. Hollywood was failing. It was a failing industry. It was failing. It was faltering at that time. But Facts. exploitation gave it an injection. They, they breathed life, life in back it. into it. Yep. So Hollywood, they got on board and just like hip hop, once they got control of that particular institution, they started popping up. It. Yeah. Because they're gonna pervert whatever they put their hands on, whatever they put their mind and psychology to, to yeah. they have a perverted psychology about everything that they approach. So that's the lens through which it's gonna come out. And that's what you've seen with the black exploitation. So when when you see all of these stories coming out of Hollywood now, right? These these stories that skim the surface about the abuse and the, it's not just abuse, it's it's perverse abuse, right? It's not just regular. Oh, he was trying to holler and whatnot. No, we're talking about yeah, we're you. talking about S and M. We're talking about uh, Sado Matt. You know what I mean? Like we're talking about some real disgusting stuff with these people. Yeah, these and they ain't even blow the lid off yet. Yeah, they're the breaking. They're they're creating. They're they're <laughs> creating altars. They're traumatizing and completely ravaging people who are quoted to, who's supposed to be starlets, but behind the closed doors, these are these people's harlots, mm -hmm. and they're 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 creating altars and they're traumatizing them, and that's the lens in which they're broadcasting these movies to the world, and in the world, and they, these movies have these perverted. Uh, value systems attached to them. They introduce you piece by piece to this perversion. They normalize this insanity. They normalize sociopathic yeah, behaviors. Your favorite actor, actress, through your favorite actor, who who have not, accepted in a real life, they got like they do it through your favorite entertainer now. Exactly this, actor. and that's why the same way. Facts. You know what I'm saying. So that's where a lot of that comes from. Thank you, caller. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Salute to y'all. Definitely. Uh, I'm working on the book right now. I'm trying to pretty much do what, uh, what Romney is doing with the conscious fiction, you know what I mean? Not for futurism. So definitely, uh, I appreciate y'all's input on that. When you're ready to make that a script, holla at us. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I, I'm actually working on a script right now. There's a film from 1974 called Black Fist, which is in the public domain, and I want to redo it as Black Fist. Okay. Beautiful. Blue we we take it in. At Gmail. Yeah. Uh, oh, definitely. Most best for sure. I'll hit y'all back through. Yeah, filthmore at Gmail. I'm taking all, all right. scripts. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right, brother. Peace. No, right, definitely. All right, y'all. Salute to family. Peace. All right. Once again, family, the call in number 718 865 8514. If you got a question for uh, Blue and Red Pill. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, we need to. That's a good conversation we had before about the whole black exploitation era and the whole movie and film. And it has to be visual though. Like we have to do one of these lives where it, we put together the visual because you have to see it. It's it's a it's a progress. But one of the caveats to that conversation is that we're going to be be able to introduce you to a solution that could be doing that could be happening now. Because that was a powerful vehicle. It just, as we see, powerful. very powerful. <laughs> I mean, during that day and time. So, if our brothers had the ability to, you know, put together a black exploitation on shoestring budgets, yeah, what's what, that? What, what we have available now, what's, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Distribution is already dealt with. Production is dealt already with. dealt with. You feel me? The talent is already dealt that, with. Yeah. What's the hang up? I have no idea. How Master P was doing about it, about it, mm. and we ain't got none of that coming out of, and these dudes got the bag. Where the movies at? That's what I'm saying. Where they at? You know. But we gonna have a uh, yeah. No, indeed, indeed. I mean, no, that's a good point. Uh, a, a, not just with movies, but with a lot of stuff. It just seems as though we we did so much more with so much less in the past, so much man. More. With 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 what what you about to say? I was gonna let you finish. No, it's just amazing. I'm just saying we got everything at our disposal. I, I still can't figure it out. The 100 inventors list, right? Right. 1800s, the whole century. 
I'm not talking about mundane inventions. I'm talking about, about traffic light. Some real deal. I'm talking about components to a freezer. I'm talking about sewing. I'm talking about. Bro, I got it all here. So mailbox, mm. ice box, ice refrigerator, mm. elevator, mm. shoe and boot lock. Damn. I had no idea myself. I'm like, what the? For real? Well, Are y'all in <laughs> Trump say what? Talk greasy. What that conversation that? On, should never ever make it rear its ugly head in any single circle concerning our people. Nobody on the planet should be allowed to question the contribution of people who they called slaves. The nerve of them. Stop referring to yourself to a title that etymologically does not apply to you. Right. You, you're not a Slav. Can no Slav do that. So they took you from Africa or they took you from the islands or they took you from the Americas and enslaved you. It's two different things. You're putting something on you that doesn't belong to you. Facts. We're going to take this call. Peace, family. Uh, welcome to the show. Do you have a question for Red and Blue? Um, hi, how y'all doing? Love and light. Mm -hmm. I actually don't have a question, but I just wanted to kind of put my thought out there for everyone. Please do. Just like, I've been, I've been in, um, mourning, I realized, and I was like, this show is Scorpio season. <laughs> so, um, just when this Meek Mill, um, thing came about, like, I, I'm on YouTube, mostly I'm listening to Black Magic, but, you know, I listen to the Breakfast Club and things here and there, because I'm always on YouTube, and when I heard the Meek Mill story, I was like, who gives a fuck, like, oh well, like, just, you know, that's what happens, you know, and mm -hmm. it is unfair, but I was just so curious, like, why are people so emotional about this? Like, I don't understand. I was like, like, this happens to so many people, and that doesn't make it okay. And I guess that's why we are having a conversation, which I love. Um, when I started thinking about it, you know, why I've been in mourning, and I've been changing my diet, I've been working on uh, being with myself and with my God, and just really listening yeah. to that, and, and, having some stronghold in this in this time that we're present in right now. Um, and that's why I really appreciate what you brother are doing, Brother Rich, um, Rafael Bruto, because we can criticize you all day, but we consistently watch and support because we know that there's something to this, this information that you all are out here giving and sharing. And I just wanted to kind of bring it full circle and tell you all that I appreciate what you're doing and all the other people who are doing things like what you are doing, regardless of naysayers, you know what I'm saying? Because it's important for us, people like myself and the listeners that are out there listening now, for us to consistently have that kind of you know, feed, and we need to be feeding you all as well. So, I mean, I said all that to say that going through my, like, journey of, like, changing my diet to be better, because it does come down to that, what you put in in your body, then you put out into the universe. We create the energy. We don't get the energy from the outside. We make the energy, right? So I was like, why are people so emotional? Well, we have to consistently gain knowledge to take better care of ourselves and know ourselves. And then we can start being so emotional about things. And then we can have some more control over our thoughts. And then we can have some control over this out, outer world. And this is what you guys consistently right. are telling us all the time, all the information and research that you do. Indeed. So I just really hope people are kind of grasping that concept, that the purpose of what you're doing and yeah. us listening, there's a purpose to this, and I yeah. hope we are all keeping yeah. that in mind. Indeed. We have the honor That's of having, having um, the brother Panic coming in the 19th. This brother has... <laughs> An amazing oratory skill of simplifying. I cannot uh, wait. Very <laughs> complex. So, you know, anything that adds on to this conversation about having, you know, inner vision or inner sight into your control over a situation. You know what I'm saying? And and like you said, you took matters into your own hand because you realized your relationship to yourself and the universe, which is all that we're trying to get at at the end of the day. So salute to you and tune in so you can get some extra tools and find and, and you know, another way to explain this to people that you care about and love the most. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, I'm sure mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying, once we get 
ourselves centered, we will want to get everybody on board that we love as well. And that's what we're here doing. So I appreciate the fact that you could uh, recognize that and appreciate it. And thank you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace to the sister. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the sister's uh, comments, you know, um, in terms of the naysayers. We've addressed this before. We realize at this point that the, the people that hate are taking notes at the same time. Where, I you, I, you know, I don't you know, you know, know, like, you know, you know like, why they hate, they take it. When I hear about that. I'm I'm like, like, yo, they <laughs> must live on an island by this. I, I, I see the know. meme yeah, say that the other day. While they're hating, they're taking notes. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, <laughs> and that's an amazing thing to do, man. Like, F that nigga. Yo, what he said? Let me write this down. Because I'm going to go tell my girl this shit. Like, and I'm, like, I I, I'm going to tell her I read this like, in a book. What type of fucking weirdo sits through three hours of something? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Religiously. To make, to make comments that are incongruent with what you sat there for three hours for. I have no time, no such time to waste whatsoever. I can only listen to something that I fully appreciate. The minute I start hearing things that I'm disagreeing I'm out. with, I'm out. Yeah, I'm super. You know how I'm many tuning out and you know how many videos I half watched? Yeah, like you know when what you saying? go on YouTube and it's like that red line, yeah, that shit is like, uh, like skirt, skirt, skirt. You know what I mean? You know how many skirt skirt videos I did? I could not well, like, watch I couldn't watch through nothing I'm not feeling. My spirit. <laughs> And if I don't agree with you, you know. And I would never jump in somebody's chat and be like, yo, you did it. If I don't agree with you, I just keep it moving. I keep it pedaling. Super dupe. Right. Indeed. Once again, family, call in number 718-865. Uh, what's the last? 865-8514. Eight, I want the people who call in who don't, who feel that make me, you know, this. Who may have a disagreement with what was being said? Who may have another opinion? I would right, love to right. hear the other opinion. If, if, if you don't, nobody is like. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say if you don't particularly agree with uh, what they're saying about Meek Mill, or you feel as though he got what was coming to him and is justified, yeah. call him as well. You know, let's if hear. Want to hear that? If, he, if he's yeah. not a law-abiding citizen, yeah. if he didn't follow the rules that were given and laid out to him, that all good citizens should follow. You know what I mean? Like, please let me know. I know y'all complaining <laughs> about that ring. I got it. They, they give me about that ring. Peace, uh, family. Welcome, the welcome, welcome to the show, uh, family. You got a question? Uh, yeah, uh, peace, uh, Brandon Blue and you, brother Rich. I watch y'all uh, kind of religiously. I'll be dropping the facts. Um, my name's Dre. I'm up in Valley Stream. And, um, peace, family. Peace. I wanted to know, peace. So I wanted to know, like, not to be like, you know, uh, what they call that, pessimistic, but I'm like, what could uh, the black men do today? Because it's like they locking this down from every angle, and I'm just watching it. And as I watch y'all and see what's going on in the news, it's looking really daunting out here. Like, what we supposed to do? You know what I mean? They are feminine, feminizing everything. And, you know, this country was based off, like, horror and just straight pillage and rape, but now they on the, the whole sexual harassment thing. You, you know what I'm saying? And now they locking people off from coming... Just based off religion, and we got people still shooting up churches. They're not addressing things. So I'm like, what is the brother supposed to do? Because it's like you, you half of us is lost. You have to fulfill your carbon mandate, and your carbon mandate is that you shall become a diamond under pressure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Imagine how mm. spermazoid feel. You know what I'm saying when it's being attacked violently and it's swimming on its way. You know, it's one that makes it out of a trillion. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, yes, statistically, there are going to be a lot of us that don't make it. But you be that mm. one that breaks through. You be that one that becomes the new thing, the new life. You understand? You make sure that you mm. remain wavy to a degree where you're able to dodge, uh, uh, you know, raindrops if need be. Raindrops. You understand? Mm. See yourself as a diamond every single day. Fulfill your carbonated mandate to not be a piece of coal that ends up in the fire. But as a goddamn diamond. Facts. All right? I like mm. the pressure to make you better. Don't circle. Mm. Don't fold. I don't watch the news. There's nothing to watch. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't watch the news. Right. The tidbits every now, you know, here and there, what have you. But I don't, you know, I don't subject myself to the program. And if I mm. see them, I, I make sure that I'm going in there with a shield and a sword because I should be prepared always to do war because I understand that it is psychological warfare being done against me Fact. when I'm going into mm. the arena. So you have to fortify yourself when you go into these places. Or, you know, we're always going to come out injured and we're going to sound injured. You feel me? Yeah. Mm. Sound injured. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll traumatize you. Yeah, we'll traumatize you, and you're gonna be living in fight or flight. You're gonna be talking from a place where cortisol is flooding your body, and you're gonna speak fear. So, brother, just know, you know, internalize that inner spirit. And again, for you as well, make sure that you tune in on the 19th to watch that stream, so the brother can give you some tools, so you can utilize to build the best vessel, the best version of yourself. You dig what I'm saying? Mm. You gonna make it. I did. Alright? Mm. Thank you, brother. That was that was nice. I felt that, man. I, Cause like I said, I watch y'all religiously. I'm going to work. I'm like, yo, red and blue. I'll be trying to get to Brooklyn and Halloween, yeah, but I never make it, but I still be watching, man. And uh, I'm gonna mm -hmm. hold it down. I'm gonna hold it down, definitely. Patreon right. backslash Russ thank, thank you, brother. Peace. Peace, peace. 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 Peace, family. You got a question for red and blue pill? Yeah, yeah, I do, for both of them. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Yeah, this is, um, my name is Dave, but in the chat, I'm Blacklight. My question is, for people that's really, you know, coming into consciousness, yes. for both of the brothers, um, top five people that they will recommend to listen to. Top five, okay. <laughs> that are alive. And that's when I'm done. <laughs> Well, based, uh, based off of not just coming in, give me what you're coming in to learn, because that would determine my top five. Where's he at? You still there, bro? Oh, hang up. So, metaphysically, you know, if you want to start from a, a place of metaphysics and occultism, uh, more science and history, I would say... Dr. Ben, Dr. Phil, Dr. Sabi, Taj Tariq, and Bobby. I think that would be my top five to start with. Starting with Phil. Huh? That's a, starting with Phil. Yeah, that, that, I, because that's how I started. I can't give uh -huh. I can't give people to go backwards. Right. I'm not gonna cherry. I'm I'm like start with Phil. Go through the migraines, you know what I'm saying? Let that, that the chip that they inserted, let that shit sort circuit. And when you know. you finish all of that, watch Nature Boy so you can see everything that you should not be doing out there. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would include me and my brother though in that top five though. I, I wouldn't exclude myself because I think that, you know, there's a lot of entry level. Um but get that foundation and then yeah, venture yeah. forward. Blue, who's your top five? Like I said, and I'm, I'm not coming at the brother, I'm just saying that there mm -hmm. are real time examples of, you know, <clears throat> what happens when you don't do the 10,000 hours of work and research. You feel me? You have to watch the masters. You have to watch the people who have walked the walk. That's the only way that the diamond is fashioned. It has to go through the trials. It has to go through the desert. Facts. You can't you can't microwave your way to the situation because this is about life. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't lived yet, how can you be someone who speaks about life? You know what I'm saying? And the twist and the turns. Like we can speak about mm -hmm. life in a lot of different cycles. We've been here for a long time. And observed a lot of things. We've seen them come and we've seen them go. Facts. In in different worlds, in different flat earths, different planes, right? On different planes of existence. On different on different planes of flat earth. We, yeah. We've seen a lot of things come and a lot of things go. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of people that are jumping out there that don't have the necessary training and, and the wherewithal of having the experience to speak experienced. You know what I'm saying? Don't make these mistakes because they end up the same way where the classics, the, the masters, their material is classical. It will be here 
for time memorial. Facts. It might as well be written on stone in the walls because it's going to be here. So, yeah, I mean, I, I you know. You didn't give us the top five. You didn't give us though. our top five. You just bro. talked yeah. about Nature Boy. Nah. You give us our top five. I was saying. <laughs> you can't take my top five. You got to have your own, bro. I'm sure. Uh, you I know. agree with you. Call, call in, okay. family. So we really need top five. My top five. Uh, Again, well, like, let me let me take this call. Peace, family. Welcome to the show. Do you have a question for me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I can't really hear clear, but I wanted to speak as far as the topic goes. As far as Meek Mill go, yes. man, we at war. We don't really even have time to focus on Meek Mill. Cause Meek Mill was a focus on that's when he was talking. When Meek Mill was on these streets, he was beating his dude up at an airport. He gonna film himself beat, giving, giving his dudes the green light to jump the next man and put it on the internet. He did a lot of stupid stuff. Now what they did to him in New York, yeah, that was straight up racial profiling. We already know how to crack a get down. But as far as Meek Mill go, Meek had a lot of chances, you did. We had wall. Meek ain't helping us. All Meek doing is creating more little ignorant niggas that we gonna have to purge all soon on later. Cause these niggas is out here ignorant and they don't kill niggas who conscious or niggas who think that they pro black. Them little niggas don't care about nothing. And that's the niggas that Meek Mill is promoting, you dig? So niggas need to not give him no pass, bruh. Meek don't give a fuck about none of us, you dig? So I can't hear what's on the other line, but that's what I needed to say, you dig? Thank you for letting me talk. Indeed. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that brother got up out of here. Um, nah. Do you got a response to that? Yeah, his perspective is definitely interesting. <laughs> From the fantasy point where I'm at, I, I would say the opposite, that I say that a lot of those ignorant brothers that are out there that don't care about consciousness, a brother like Meek is needed because that brother was helping to, you know, teach those brothers as, uh, he was able to steer and he was definitely able to give them some kind of gems because you're still crossing the bridge when you're crossing over into what is known as woke or consciousness some people are walking you over that bridge some people are giving you the you know what I mean some people are waking you up to certain kind it's, of other it, things it's that the prepare. paradox it's the left foot the trips to right yeah and we seen that with the brother he spoke one way but yes he did a lot of sloppy you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, nonsensical things. That, yeah. Again, like I said, put him in a predicament that he has to see his level of culpability in this situation. That's Facts. what this Scorpio energy is about. Indeed. In a reflection. In a reflection. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, let's pull that pie chart out. What percentage did you have to do with this? Before Facts. we can go and talk about the ulterior motives of the judge or the injustices of the criminal system. Because like the brother said, he has had an insurmountable amount of opportunity where other people don't have that. They don't Facts. have second, third, fourth, and fifth chances. chances. That is a truth. That's unrealistic. You mm -hmm. understand? And he got that because of his level mm -hmm. of privilege. You know what I mean? Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? So with that comes a level of responsibility as well. You know? True indeed. To yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. To your fan base. You know what I'm saying? And also, to your you know, seats, to, to family. Yeah, to, to, you know, to your family. You know, everybody did. You know what I mean? And I like, I appreciate what the brother, he said, uh, you know, not that it, one thing counterbalances the other, but even his whole conversation about pills and lean. That's a needed discussion. And I seen that it dovetail, it, it created a lot of other conversations that people were having about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas they wasn't having it prior to that. They were mm -hmm. being honest about the addiction. They was being honest about how hard it was to break those addictions. Facts. You feel me? I seen AR Ab going. I seen G Herbo going. I seen a lot of dudes, you know what I'm saying, come forth now and they like, yo, that lean, that, that thing will jack you up. You feel yeah. me? That's part of that opiate. Crazy. Yeah, that's part like, of that opiate addiction. You know, that's not an easy thing that you can shake. My whole thing is like, someone's on all of that on probation. Facts. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So again, that'd be the paradox that you got to keep it real because this is your entertainment self. Yeah. You feel me? This is your entertainment self. But then 
you know, you dressing up and what have you, and you go on the court, and you putting on that other face, as if these people are not listening to your music and on your IG and looking at your life because you got an open book to it. So it's crazy, B. You understand? Facts. Yep. I want to take one more call, but the, uh, before that, I want to uh, holler at the brother Sarnetta. He was trying to get through, and the brother just called, so let me uh, okay. call the brother Sarnetta. <clears throat> oh, hold on, hold on, sir. Peace out. Sir, can you hear us? Sarnetta, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you. I hear you, brother. All right, all right. What's up, brother? What's happening? You live now. You live. Okay, I want to say peace and black power to my brother Rich. Of course, peace and black power to my brothers Red Pill and Blue Pill. Peace out. And peace. Um, all I want to say is because I heard the last caller call in and he spoke about Meek Mills and we shouldn't be giving a damn about Meek Mills. Meek Mills is our brother. Meek Mills make a mistake just like everybody else. That's and we right. got to stop acting like our class it's so clean and everybody else is poison. There's no different from you see all of us and all these brothers banging on everybody else on YouTube where we tearing down at each and every one of us, but we try to make it look like we are so better than, than the brothers that's out there, than the brothers that's on the corner. We are no better from them. Okay? So Meek Mills is our brother and, and we should not always try to condemn everybody because they make a mistake. And that's what I want to say. Shout out to Meek Mills, free Meek Mills, because a lot of you Negroes out there don't give a damn about your own people either. Now, I would like to give, before I leave, my top five. I heard Red Pill gave his top five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My top five is... <laughs> Khalid, Khalid, Dr. Khalid, Khalid. that do Muhammad. Facts. Dr. Khalid that do Muhammad. What? Dr. Khalid that do Muhammad. Dr. Khalid that do Muhammad. Dr. Khalid that do Muhammad. That's my top five. That's, That's all right. I wanted to drop. Shout out to you, brother Rich. Shout out to my brother, the Pillars. I see y'all this weekend. Peace and Black Power is going peace. down. Brother Jabari and Zion Lex is in. Peace. We out. Peace, right. family. Peace out. Peace, family. Welcome to the show. Do you have a uh, question for Red and Blue? Yeah, family. Can you hear me? Do you have a question? Yeah, what's going on, man? Peace, family. Peace, peace. Peace, man. I'm calling from Florida. Peace Shout family. out to Florida, land of flowers. You already know, you already know. Just wanted to say what's up to y'all, man. But I was really calling in to speak on the meat meal thing. To, um, yeah, please do. I was kind of in a crib with the other brother. He was he, he wasn't really fair to really fuck meat meal. The situation is we weren't about the celebrities too much. Because regular brothers going through this every day. And it's like we're not paying attention to them. So the brother was really tr saying, like, wh why are we not giving the eye to them? Why are we not speaking up for the ones that ain't got a voice? No, I don't think well, that's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. um, he was saying, fuck Meek Mill. And, you know, he gave his reasons for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he's voicing a sentiment that a lot of people have. You're voicing a sentiment that a lot of people have as well. Facts. And we are saying that... This conversation that we're having about Meek, Meek is an archetype of, you know, our brothers and sisters that are unfairly treated by the system. But his situation is a little bit different because of his celebrity status. You know what I'm saying? He has gotten passes and, you know, we're seeing something that we could say, yo, he got, you know what I mean? Like, he got unjustifiably sentenced based on some things that, you know... That criteria wouldn't hold up. It shouldn't hold up in court. You know what I mean? Based on what the violation is about. You had police contact, but there was no convictions. You know what I'm saying? And the time was unjustified. So we can see that there was an example made out of our brother. But we can also see that because of the example of who our brother is, that he also has got a level of passes that our other brothers and sisters normally would never see. And, as and a result, real, real quick, Red, and yeah. I just want, you know, for what, from what the brother's saying and what I see other people making comments about on social media and in the uh, chat room about why are we talking about Meek Mill, you got to understand there comes a point where you got to stop being emotional 
and get out your feelings and understand strategy and war and chess and all that. There's a way to reach the people. When Meek Mill allows us to talk about a bigger conversation, like Blue said, that people will ordinarily ignore. So when we talk about Meek Mill, if we talk about Tyrese, it really isn't about Tyrese. It's mm -hmm. about child support. That every dude so that... that Seven out of ten dudes I know get ra railroaded from. But if we're talking about it in the context of celebrities, more people listen, more people learn, more people uh, 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 um, get, get, get the conversation get going. More. Yeah, so this is what we call strategy. You never do something, uh, you got to get your emotions out of it. If I got, if my emotions was into this business, I wouldn't have 200,000 subscribers now. I let my ego go and I said, what is it going to take for me to reach my people? Uh, my people over here, if they're over there, I'm going to talk about what's going over there, but I'm going to put my spin on it. I'm going to put my twist to it. So this is nothing but mere strategy, my brother. This is marketing. This is strategy. This is a good way to promote your brand. This is a good way to talk about the unfair, unjust criminal justice system. And Meek Mill is an opportunity. Waka Flocka was an opportunity to talk about what the Moore's been talking about forever. What I see, what A.A. Rashid, what Taj Tariq, what the pills. So we use these as strategy, brother. That's all it is, and I don't want y'all to take it personal or to get emotional yeah. about it. Hi, um, I just can I add something? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I just want to say maybe you guys should put a disclaimer at the end addressing like the major topic. Okay, because you said it's not about Tyrese, it's about child support. If you add it at the end, just a little note, like saying, hey, we need to look at child support and do our research on child support and see how it's so detrimental to the black community, yeah. that would be a great addition because it's m more informative for the people that are operating at a higher frequency to understand, like, okay, well, yeah, we need to address, we need to get the masses in with the meat mill name but drop in the title. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, not doing doing all that. I'm not I doing all that. that. During the conversation that we had about Tyrese, I brought that, that point up. You know what I'm saying? To, you need to look into child support. You need to look into, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the laws that um, have enacted child support. And, um, you know, like Umar was saying, how it came out of that Clinton crime bill. You need to look at the illegality of child support. You know what I'm saying? You can't find that in the Constitution of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? These are all statutes. They came up with that. And they're, they're, they're just the same way that they're sending people to jail for taxes. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not lawful, but it's happening every day because we don't know the law. So, so yeah. this, it's another situation where we're being castigated and made victims of our because of our ignorance. And we just have a tendency to think, oh, this is the way things go. Since when? That's not the way things go. So even mm -hmm. with a situation like me, you know, somebody's going to be able to walk away from this and say, yo, you know, the way that they approach that particular conversation and that situation, I can see, you know what I'm saying? I can extract something in, from, something from it for myself. If ever I find myself in a situation or if I know somebody in a situation, I have multiple ways in which to look at this. Okay. So we're just utilizing this as a catalyst to have a conversation. It's a broader conversation that we don't have enough in our community, our community, which is hindered by the fact that two point however million people are missing. They behind the wall. Yeah. You know, are we are we doing group visits to go and see them? Are we you know, what I'm saying we have Talking any right, power right program? Them. You know what I mean? You feel me? We have any um, collection plate? Me and Pat, we don't we don't do none of those things. <laughs> And that's a considerable amount of people, you know what I'm saying, who are part of our collective consciousness, who are undergoing situations and circumstances and conditions where they are directly, directly interfacing with white supremacy. Indeed. Right. You understand? Thanks for the call once again, sis. We appreciate the call and comments. Okay, bye. Peace, peace. Yeah. peace. All right, family. Oh, let me. Peace, family. Welcome to the show. Do you have a question for uh, Red and Blue Pill? Hello? Family, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. Go ahead, yeah, brother. What's, what's going on? Yeah, peace to the pills. This is George Megan from Philly. What's up? Peace to the God. Peace, family. Yeah, 
what's going on, brother? What's, All right, what's going yeah, on? That's your yeah, place. I can do it. Yeah, 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 I can do it with you guys. Oh, what up, George? Peace to God. Yeah, what's, yeah, what's going on? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm listening, man. I, 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 you know, I, I just think it's a good topic. I just think that, man, like, we find excuses, man, to, for everything, man, just to try to, you know, just to put each other down and, and come at each other, like, we, we, uh, we, um, the thing was just said about the, um, about the, uh, uh, sweet, I can't hear you guys so good. Hold on. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, get back. That was a bad connection. Uh, Peace family, welcome to the show. Do you have a question? What's up? What's up, family? Peace, peace, peace. Uh, to the pair of peace, uh, brother. Rich, what's good? Peace family. Peace family. Y'all, 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 y'all can hear me? Yeah, yeah, good, brother. Oh, uh, yeah, I want to just say, um, on my top five, Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm my name, Mo, man. I'm calling from Chicago. Peace to the shot town. Peace, family. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm going to go on my top now. I had to get it to, um, uh, I had to get it to, um, uh, uh, Bonnie Kenny, Osma Quaid, Irene Bain, Brother Kane. Ray Hagen brought mad people in there. Yeah, he brought mad people. He brought mad people in coming out the church. Damn, yeah, I had to. I apologize to the brother, but there was a lot of noise in the background. Salute family. Salute but thanks for your top five. Salute. You know, yeah, I like thanks, that. Thanks. Uh, shout out to the Shot Town. The family that's calling in, or uh, people that are calling in from states and cities in particular that have, once again, extraordinary amounts of incarcerated, melanated people. Yes. Chicago, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yep. You know what I'm saying? The Texas. From, Texas, the brother called from Florida. Florida. All of these states. Brother called from the West Coast. Facts. You talking about yeah. states that, you know, their their GDP is is centered around their prison population. Facts. And their prison population is predominantly melanated people. Yep. You feel me? Peace family, welcome to the show. Do you have a question oh, for Ray Blue Pill? Yes, I do. Go ahead, brother. Uh, peace to the gods and earth, peace to the human civilized life on the planet. I just wanted to talk about, uh, my name is, uh, Cloud Walk in the Room. I just wanted to talk about, uh, the judge that was on the TSA security list, or TSA watch list, the black judge, and then also, that kind of reminds me of going back to, to the black judge that was in the Hudson River. Yes. Mm, uh, okay. a couple of, uh, uh, what, like a year ago or something Hudson like that, judge. and then the FBI that, yeah. comes out with the whole, you know, the whole woke black people on the, on the terrorists, but they letting these white people shoot up these babies. So I just wanted to make a comment on that and, you know, talk about that. Okay. Indeed. Y- y'all got any uh, comments on what the brother said? Um, the judges coming up missing. Yeah. The river. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, I had that in my uh, lecture, introducing right. that aspect. There was there two was judges, somebody Two in judges, yeah, and the brother said there was a judge. I saw the video that went around. She was on the, on the terrorist list. Oh, she was on the terror list? Yeah, the no-fly list. And wow. TSA, they put three S's on you. So, family. Facts. You know, I used to get three S's. I got three S's as well, but I never went to screening. Uh. She got three S's, and they sent her, you know what I'm saying? But I've never made it through, uh, what you call it, without getting... Pulled over and padded anyway, so yeah, I don't, you know what I mean. I've never made it through a scanner through or a none scan of those straight, things. Yeah, right. I never made it through straight ever, and it ain't got nothing to do with my jewelry. So 
she had got flagged, you know what I mean? She was on the list or what have you, and they said that sometimes you could be randomly selected. She didn't understand why lottery. she was on the list. Yeah, there's a, a terrorist lottery. lottery. Terrorist lottery. You know, you randomly get the selections or what have you. So I don't really know as that goes, but you should already know that, yeah, like, they're watching you. You know what I'm saying? And, and, yeah, it's a lot going on now. I just, you know, it's, it's, it's just, just a lot of real stuff going on. Yeah, and I don't like, think, you know, enough of us are up I, on it and there, know what's yeah, going on. There is no industry or agency to me that hasn't been infiltrated by, you know, a, a white supremacy element. or lack of a, yeah, yeah. a white supremacy element, a, a um, white identity extremist element, for lack of a better term. And, you know, they know how to run their plays. They know how to keep their eyes on people that they consider threats to that particular structure. So I see the evidence in it everywhere. The New York City judiciary in particular, at some point we got to get our brother um, True Master on the program. Facts. Because he has some vital information. Vital. Okay, here's a brother that used, you know, his moral science to defend himself in a rape case in New York City, and he was successful with getting these devils off, off his, his back. back. Real and demonstration in real, real time. Real demonstration in real time. As a free they man. To scalp him. They was trying to take his whole life okay. from him. So he fought that off, and he has some vital information about the judiciary here in New York City, and it's corrupt to the core. And that, that goes beyond just levying charges against somebody and pointing fingers saying, y'all corrupt. No, we got facts. Proof. We have proof. Receipts. It's, it's crazier than you can ever imagine. You know what I mean? So, so that's you know ultimately that's what's being addressed tonight. We're utilizing individuals as a catalyst to have a deeper conversation to bring awareness to the plight of millions of people who have been forgotten, who are in yeah. shallow graves. When at the end of the we day, know. you're going to one day eventually, not you in particular. But those people are going, going, they're going to be very useful. Their energy is being utilized in, a, in certain situations as a free labor force. <laughs> like mine was when I was in boot camp. I, I, my energy and my time, my, my sweat equity was utilized as a, la a free labor force. I know what it feels like. So where is the contingency plan in neighborhoods or movements where they talk about uplifting fallen people where they're where they're meeting people when they come home with solutions these solutions which will be a formula that has been proven to work in so many other cases and and you know just to um give you an idea of this you know how important this conversation is and what sort of scabs this conversation has removed, you know what I'm saying? Even tonight when the brother called in to talk about black exploitation. Fact. And you, you brother, you brought up the BIE, which is COINTELPRO 2.0. You know what I'm saying? We have to keep in mind that during COINTELPRO 1.0, there are political prisoners that have been incarcerated, right, who were pressing the front line. Who are doing some of the very same things that we're doing now in regards to, you know, getting information out to the community, organizing yeah. with the community, right? Being um, the dissident voice against a corrupt system. Those people have been incarcerated since the late 60s and the early 70s, and nobody speaks about them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have seen many iterations yeah, of the quote unquote. Yeah, that's the point in the room, too, right now. That's the point in the room. Not to interrupt go you. I'm sorry, come but. And go, you know what that, I'm saying? And come that was the and point go. in the room that everybody, you know, people like, you know, Milk Meek is not that important. You know, it's a lot of political prisoners out here. We still got Again, media behind bars. Yeah. They trying to get us out of in like, Cuba. Like we you know, said, like we said. You know, all of this is connected. Hold on, family. Because I'm, we're not in the chat room right now, so we will have to address what you mentioned so the people in the chat that are listening can hear again this is a conversation that we're utilizing as a catalyst to have a larger conversation the people should take that conversation out of the chat room and just call in and contribute that voice contribute that to the feed so when people can go and listen to this later on when it goes viral they can hear all of the angles of this conversation rather than hiding it in a chat room 
You understand? So yes, we understand yep. that there's a bigger conversation to be had. But how can we spark that conversation? You know, nobody wants to talk about Asada when Asada's not cool to talk about. Yeah. Nobody wants to yeah. talk about Mamiya when Mamiya's not cool to talk about. Yeah. I don't see right. no petitions going around social media talking about Niggas hands sharing, off Shikara. Yeah, nobody's you know sharing the articles ain't nobody, on Facebook. Yeah, ain't nobody pen palling Mamiya. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knows. Can you tell me where Mutulu's at right now? Say it again. Can you tell me what facility Mutulu's in and how much time he got? How much time do I got? Matulu Shakur. Oh, he. As far as I know, he he been in there for damn near what forty years, fifty, forty, yeah, forty three years now. He was supposed to be released last year. You know what I'm saying? I thought he was still, and then I heard he was still on death row. Like they were still trying to get him off of death row. No, that's Matu, that's Mumia you're talking about. I'm talking about Matulu. And oh, yeah, Mumia almost died like a year and a half yeah. ago. You know what I'm saying? He had a debilitating disease where he was scabbed up and, and everything. Lost like, weight, yeah. lost weight. He was on his deathbed. You know what I mean? The European was out here telling people what was going on with him. You feel me? Fake nigga outrage. And this is not about you. I'm just saying, I seen this shit all my life. All my life. Okay? This is the reason that my father don't fuck with that shit. Real talk. Fake nigga outrage. People don't be there for the people that put their lives on the line. They want to keep telling us that Meek Mill is not worthy to talk about. We're talking about a different era, a different age, and Meek Mill does mean something to the youth of today. So in order for us to get this message to the youth of today, we're going to utilize the catalyst in which sparks the interest in the youth of today. The parents of them youth, you need to be worried about Mumia and Mutulu and Asada. You know what I'm saying? And then we can collectively bring this conversation to a head and have a forum where we can speak about it all and we can bring some free political prisoners to these forums and have them speak to our children in their language while the it's a hot button topic. You know what I'm saying? Thank, right. Thanks for the call, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they I don't think, know uh, Blue, fact from Blue, fiction. Yeah, they don't Blue know the math up. decision. Blue summed that up great. You Blue know, for this. And, and, and like I said earlier, our people, you know, we got to get the emotions out of it. You hear a name and you go crazy and you have the fake nigga outrage. <laughs> There's a bigger topic being discussed, discussed Do right you now. know what North Korea is if, doing? If, if I put Mumia on, on the title of this video <laughs> tonight instead of Meek, Half the people in the chat room wouldn't even be here tonight. If I had wrote Mamiya, they'd be like, why they talk about Mamiya? They talking about Mamiya. So, I mean, come on, y'all. Who's Mamiya? Come on, y'all. Free Mamiya Mills. <laughs> we got <laughs> We got to be better at business, man. A lot of us should have went to business school, man. We messed up when we said F school. I understand the F school, but we need to be a little more sharper when it comes to business because we don't understand how marketing goes. We don't understand strategy. We don't understand none of that. All we understand is we've been oppressed, pretty much, man. Yeah. But um, listen. And, that and, and what 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 the next month when the world is gonna end? Oh, um, Nibiru, Nibiru, yeah. <laughs> Nibiru. Oh, Nibiru. We worried about yo. What is the world gonna end? Matter of fact, why don't y'all talk about that? Let's talk about December twenty third. Uh, December thirty fourth. <laughs> y'all always coming up with a new month with a new date. There's but uh, sh shout out, shout out to everybody in the chat room, though, man. Salute the chat. Peace to the gods. Uh, the gods. I definitely appreciate the everybody in the chat room showing love and support, even all the uh, the fools in the chat room. You know, uh, we 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 about to get out of here. It's twelve forty two. Any uh, closing comments for the people? Um, you know, put the mic to you. If this conversation speaks to you know the work that you do where you're reaching out to brothers and sisters that are not incarcerated that are in the streets or living a certain kind of life or following a certain kind of path and you're explaining to them that the worst thing that can happen to them in these days and times as a black man and a black woman specifically is being incarcerated and you're doing everything in your power to prevent that salute to you and continue doing the work. And I hope that you are being supported 
uh, both mentally, emotionally, financially, and spiritually by the people around you. And, you know, that's basically what I got to say. You know what I'm saying? I think we, we definitely talked about everything. We covered a lot of topics. Uh, the multifaceted nature of the topic, you know what I mean? Going all the way from the brother's personal case all the way to the broader perspective. So, no, I don't have anything to say. Salute to all of the callers. Mm-hmm. Salute to the callers. Um, salute to the viewers. You know what I'm saying? People that uh, journey with us through the totality of this conversation as we pass through many different chambers of this conversation. Shout out to the Wu. was 24 years since the 36 Chambers was released. All right, we got to put that on the record. Um, again, you know, we're having a conversation that should uh, resonate with a lot of people in the audience because we were listening to the demographics of the callers. So people, where you're at, in particular, we know that there's a high incarceration rate. We know that you are losing... Uh, thousands upon thousands of your young men and, y- and your young women to, you know, to penitentiary. They're, they're out there taking penitentiary chances, a large percentage of them. And then there's a, another percentage of them that are unjustifiably being targeted, okay, and put into purgatory to be utilized as chattel property in a corporate financial prison industrial complex system. Do not fall victim and pray to these traps because these traps are set these traps are not going to be unset you know what i'm saying prison industrial complex just met with trump okay jeff sessions, jeff sessions just passed um legislation or, or mandatory sentencing you know what i'm saying they, they just reenacted the drug war hunt all right so we have to be very mindful that the music that our brother meek is the poster child for okay nice. and French Montana and Migos and all of these other individuals that we're talking about that we love rallying behind the saying they're unjustifiably targeted. All right. Like, bro, I used to promote with the hip hop cop, Derek Parker. I keep telling people this. Mm-hmm. All right. This was 03 and beyond when I used to promote club promote at Club Cheetah. He was retired at that point. He knew every D boy in New York. I'm talking about the willies of the williest. All right. They have personal relationships with these people. They know everything. They know everybody's business. So for them putting together these drug task force, drug task force and hip hop go or hip hop task force and hip hop artists is hand in hand. They're strange bedfellows. There's nothing that the hip hop task force don't know about what's going on because they're fans of the music. And they know the entourages. And if they don't, they know somebody they can flip to tell them what they need to know. So it's a charade game to begin with. Mm-hmm. When they decide to pop your pimple for whatever reason, because when they're not popping your pimple, you are working for them, whether you know it or not. Okay? The only reason they're allowed to run around the way that these people run around is by the mercy of the fact that you're working for higher-ups. The higher-ups are like, look, that's our property. They're running plays for us. Okay? Same way that uh, Ross was running plays for Reagan and them, and he was getting the pass. You understand? And you have a tendency to think that you are untouchable. All right? That's what 90s era hip hop did to the minds of the youth that came afterwards. They was like, yo, they're impervious to law enforcement because they're on wax selling smack and getting away with it. No, they was given a pass to do that so they could fill these beds up. So we have to at some point take culpability as a community and see that our strongest assets are being utilized by the corporate interests, the same people that are signing these contracts are the same people that have stocks in this prison industrial complex. Facts. It's the same entertainment conglomerates that are making the multi-millions and then are bundling, okay, your bonds and selling them on the market. So there's so much bread to be made that this is not going to slow down anytime soon. So if you are trap rapping, if you are actually in the trap, then you have to be very mindful of this administration that you're dealing with. You're not going to get a mill pass. You're going to get 20 to 40 years. They're going to throw the book at you. They're going to give you the maximum. You know what I'm saying? If you're about that life, I would say get out that life at this particular time. Make better life decisions. The odds are not in your favor, all right? 
So for our brother, I'm more than certain that, you know, he's going to see another day out of this situation. Why? Because he has the resources and he has the support of the people that are behind him. For those that are unspoken, the millions that aren't spoken about, who don't have the support, who don't have nobody that could call a governor, you know what I'm saying, and call a, a favor in, you know. You need to pray for them brothers and sisters. You need to put a candle out. You need to light, you know what I'm saying? You need to find a pen pal program and write to them and see if there's anything that you could do on the outside in the meantime. But in the meantime, in between time, keep your ass out of the jaws of the belly of this beast because they are crushing melanated men and women unceremoniously, all right? And then the flip side of it, they're trying to send other people to go on time no more for telling you niggas this. Okay? That's the fucking real deal about that. All right? So peace, love, and light. Excellent way to end it. This brother Rich, make sure y'all tune in. Brother Panic, November 19th, man. Uh, information in the description if you want the live stream. is USA Live Stream slash, dot com slash panic. Or if you want to get tickets to be in person, uh, www.blackmagic363.eventbrite.com. Once again, thanks to the family in the chat room, keeping it lit, keeping it interesting with everybody's opinions, everybody's uh, rants and everything else in there. Uh, shout out to, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Well, everybody that advertised that I shouted out in the beginning of the program. But uh, on that note, we signing out, family. We're going to see you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.